Hello, my brothers and sisters, for all of you lovers of the truth, my family and the Messiah. Give an honor, the highest honor to our Heavenly Father, He who was, He who is, and He who is to come, the Almighty, our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. And give an honor to His only begotten Son, our King, our Savior. The one who it was prophesied by the messengers of heaven that he will save his people from their sins. And that is Yahushua, our king. As I've been granted permission by Heavenly Father and our king to continue on their teaching regarding the beatitude and the similitudes, it's for all of us to focus our mind on our Messiah because he is of great importance to us. Mind you, he is the prophet that it was prophesied by our ancestor, Masha, as the world, we have known him as Moses. And he is the one that we are to hear because it was him and he still is the one who has the revelation of our Heavenly Father. Everything that was written down in Proclaim from the uh, from the law, the prophets, uh, from the psalms, and even the writings. It is our King Yahushua, who is the very epitome of, of our Heavenly Father's words. And if we don't grasp that, then how can we be saved? When you go into the inspired gospels and the inspired letters of the apostles, these men quoted, of course, from the law and of the prophets and the psalms and the writings of the past. But these men were anointed to do that. When these men quoted, they weren't just quoting just a quote, but they was expressing through our Heavenly Father, through His Son's anointing, and giving revelation of what was really contained in the scriptures themselves. Do you all understand? Continuing, thank you my Father, my King, for what you're gonna do today. Uh, continuing, please, uh, those of you who have your scriptures, please uh, turn. We're going to go into the inspired Gospels, and we're going to go into Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 5. And continuing in the words of our Heavenly Father through His Son, the prophet. And we're going to be going to... Continuing, Matthew chapter 5, and starting at verse number 7. It's what our master says. He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's powerful. You see, the things that our Messiah was teaching through the power of our Heavenly Father was before he went into the commandments pertaining to the kingdom. He was expressing blessings. He was expressing rewards. What a lot of us fail to realize is what we're getting ready to embark on as many of you begin to study the life of the Messiah. This is an introduction to the laws pertaining to the kingdom. Do you understand? He was teaching us how to observe his kingdom inside of us, to be transformed into the new man, into the new creature. This is what a lot of, many of us are not really grasping. We have to really understand what the Messiah was teaching. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? So he said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Now let's please go to Matthew, the ninth chapter, please. Matthew, the ninth chapter. And let's start at, <clears throat> excuse me, verse number 27. 
It says, And when Yahushua, Yah the Savior, departed there, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, You, son of Dawiyah, have mercy on us. That's powerful. Look at our Messiah as he, through the, his precious spirit, will allow you all to see him. He's going about his way, preaching the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. And here we have two men who are in need. And they are crying out for his help. And they're asking for his mercy. And one of the beautiful things about our master is he never taught anything without him actually living and being an example. See, our master didn't just lead by force. As what we see today in this carnal world that we're living in. But he led by example. Do you understand my brothers and sisters? Notice how these two men who are in need. They are asking for mercy. Verse 28. It says and when he was come into the house. The blind men came to him. And Yahushua said unto them, Believe you that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yes, Master. That's powerful. See, our king, you know, thank you so much, my father, my king, as you give me permission to speak this, to speak well of you. Our master, is, he's much different than what you see today. There are a lot of people today who are claiming that they are preaching about him. And that they represent his kingdom and his ministry. Yet in times of need, in situations like this, many men today would look and say, well, I don't have time to do that. Maybe you can come meet me in, a, in the church on Saturday or Sunday morning. Right now, I have to do my own business. I don't really have time now. Do you understand? But look at how our king made time. Do you see this? He asked them, do you believe? And they said, yes, I don't know. Do you understand? Verse 29, he says, then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. Do you see this? Notice and look at the love of our king. He actually touched them, physically touching them. You don't really see too many of that going on today. We're living in a time today where a lot of men who claim that they're of, of him are even afraid to touch the sick, to touch those who have ailments, because they're afraid that the ailments may get on them. Do you understand? Notice how our king reached out to them, to these men who were in need of his mercy. Verse 30, it says, and their eyes were opened. And Yahushua straightly charged them, saying, see that no man knows it. Even though our Messiah, he is, help me, my father, my king, to speak well of you. He is so precious to us. But look at his characteristics. He wasn't trying to take credit for what was done. He did not want to be advertised in a carnal manner. Do you see this? But he always gave credit to his heavenly father. Verse 31. He says, but they, it says, but they, when they were departed, spread, abro spread abroad, excuse me, spread abroad his fame in all that country. These men were thankful. They, they, they had to, they couldn't contain themselves. They still had to spread and tell the news about him. Verse 32, as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. Now, we need to really focus on this. How many of you leaders out here today? If a person came to you possessed with a spirit, how many of you will be merciful enough to still operate and to deal with that spirit as our Messiah did? 
ถ้าไม่เหนียวเทียน verse 33 and when the devil was cast out the dumb spoke and the multitudes marvel saying it was never so in Israel see the thing that our Messiah was doing through the power of our Heavenly Father the scribes and Pharisees weren't doing those things the Sadducees wasn't doing those things as I said the Sadducees they were merely religious with the law and the things pertaining to the scriptures but they weren't doing what our master was doing Do you see this? Verse 34. It says, but the Pharisees said, he cast out devils through the prince of devils. Through the prince of the devils. Do you see that? Look at what they were saying. Hmm. But can you see the mercy of our Messiah in the action? Verse 35. And Yahushua went about all and Yahushua went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, in their assemblies, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. You see what our master was doing? You see how he's operating in the mercy of our Heavenly Father? Do you see how our Heavenly Father's mercy is inside of him? Our master wasn't just sitting there in one place. He was moving as he was instructed, going out, do you understand? Doing the work of our Heavenly Father amongst the people. Are many of you all who it applies to, are you doing that today? As you were being led, not doing it just religiously? Are you dealing with these things that are, you notice, Thank you, my father, my king. Notice that the things that our master was doing under the power of our heavenly father, the things, the ailments, demonic possession, sickness, all these things are still here in the earth today. Do you understand? The question is, are we operating in the things that our Messiah was doing today? Verse 36, it says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. The compassion. He had mercy. Listen. Verse 37, then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore the master of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Ask for the mercy of our Heavenly Father. Our King, he didn't teach us anything that he didn't live himself. Do you see this now? Thank you, my Father, my King. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to the 18th chapter, please. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. And let's look at uh, verse. Verses 21. Start at verse 21. It says, then came. Kapha, it says, Pater. It says, then came Kapha to him and said, Master, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? You know, this is issues that we all have to deal with because these are real issues today. These are real questions that we deal with as people internally today when someone trespasses against us. Listen, Yahushua said unto him, I say not unto you, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Mm. Now, at times, you know, if you analyze this the wrong way, if we analyze these principles that our king was teaching the wrong way, it can cause us to stumble in his word. 
But if we learn that, thank you, my father, my king. Remember, he said, the words that I speak to you are spirit in our life. See, if we take his words in the wrong mind state, then we can stumble. But if we take his words as he said his words are, the words of our heavenly father, and if we take note that his words are spirit in our life, and we apply what he's saying, then we can really grow. The change will truly come. These are not just words that he is speaking. They're spirit in their life. Listen, my brothers and sisters, please. Verse 23, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his master commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children and all that he had, and payments to be made. That's powerful. This is something that that servant deserved. Based upon him not being able to fulfill his debt. Verse 26. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him. Saying, Master, have patience with me. And I will pay you all. See, he was pleading for the master's mercy. Verse 27. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion. And loosed him and forgave him the debt. See, this is the characteristics many of you already know. These are the characteristics, what Yahushua is saying. He's showing us a glimpse of the Father, our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. He who exists. His mercy. You see, many, thank you so much, Father Maki. Many of us today, we don't deserve the mercy of our Heavenly Father. But it's because of His goodness. He sent his son to us. It's because of his goodness that we can receive his precious spirit. Do you understand? Verse 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that you owe. How many of us like that today? How quickly can we forget about the mercy that was extended to us? And yet we cannot extend that same mercy to our fellow man. Can you sense his attitude when he said, pay me what you owe? A lot of us are doing that in the spirit. Verse 29. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Listen. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Look at him. How many of us are doing this today? We forget what our Heavenly Father through his Son and what his Son has done for us. And when our Father puts us in certain tests, to resemble his mercy and his son's mercy, we tend to forget. We have to be careful now. Verse 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their master all that was done. See, we have to realize we're being watched. This is a picture that we notice how the servant was being watched. So we all have to understand that when our Heavenly Father gives us rewards, when he gives us things that we do not deserve, notice how now we are going to be watched to see if we are truly grateful. Verse 32. Then his master, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you desired me. Should not you also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? And his master was wroth or angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you, if you from your hearts 
forgive not everyone his brother their trespass. Notice how he said from your hearts. See, a lot of us, we forgive by just lips. I forgive you. I let that go. But deep down in our spirit, man, we still hold on to those things. But true forgiveness, true mercy is when the whole being of you is intact. It, it can't be just your lips being involved in your heart and still holding on. Everything has to be on one accord. You can't do it in your carnal mind, but with the spirit, the mind of our Father, our King, it can be done. You understand? If you truly want to follow Him. Thank you, Master. My father, my king, for your wisdom. Let's go into our ancestor, the apostle, Shaul. And let's look at the things that he taught from the teachings of our Messiah. 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4. Excuse me. And start at verse 1. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Do you see this? Thank you, my master, my father, my king. You see the ministry, they didn't have, it wasn't ministries out here. It was the ministry, the service of our king, Yahushua. And notice how the apostles were in perfect flow with that. The scribes and the Pharisees represented people who had their own little ministries out here. Their own services to the people. But notice how the apostles had to get on one accord with what the master was teaching them. Verse 1 again. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. You see, they received something from our master. And they're projecting the same. Do you understand? Verse 2. It says, but have renounced the hidden things. Of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the Almighty deceitfully, but by main, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the Almighty. They knew they was being watched. The same mercy that was extended to them in their fallen state, they needed to do the same thing to emulate the Messiah's mercy and our Father's mercy to those who were lost. In the sight of him and his son. Do you understand? Thank you, my father, my king. Verse 3. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom, the, it says God here, speaking of the mighty one, Hashitan. It says, in whom the mighty one, speaking of the enemy, of this world, have blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of the anointed one, or the Messiah, who is, who is the image of the Almighty, should shine unto them. See, there was another mighty one here of this world, not of the things of above. And notice how he was hindering and blinding the minds. So that way people can really understand and really truly receive the gospel. Same thing today. But Hashitan, your might will come to an end. Your might is for a season. In Yahushua's name. You are nothing. Do you understand, Hashitan? Thank you, my father, my king. Verse 5. Listen to what the apostle said. He says, For we preach not ourselves. Thank you, my father, my king. Listen again, for those of you who are hard-headed and not really listening. It says, for we preach not ourselves, but the anointed one, Yahushua, the master, and ourselves, your servants, for Yahushua's sakes. You see what the apostles were preaching? They were preaching about the master, not about themselves, my family. Verse 6, for the Almighty who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the Almighty in the face of Yahushua the Messiah. 
in the face of Yahushua the Messiah, meaning that our, our king, he's watching us. Do you see this now? For all of you who receive the mercy of, of him and his father, they are watching you. They're watching me to see if we have forgotten about that, to see if we are not going to give that same kindness out to those. Do you understand who we come in contact with? Learn to love your enemies. There's a reason why Yahushua said that to us. Why? Because he loved his enemies. But it's a lot of us who we're so quick to forget these things. And we can lose sight. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of the almighty and not of us. That's the beauty of it. The precious. What is the precious treasure? Yahushua and our heavenly father Yahuwah. Their precious spirit. Not us. Them. Do we all understand? I hope we do, including myself. I hope we all understand. Let's go to the Apostle Yaakov, as we all have called him James. Thank you so much, Father my King, for your discipline, your firmness, and for your characteristics that we all may learn and stop with the foolishness out here. James chapter 5, please. Start at verse 7. Listen what he says. Under inspiration of our Father and our King. He says, Be patient, therefore, brothers, unto the coming of the Master. Behold, the husbandmen wait for the precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. He's telling us to be patient. Just like our king is being patient. You know, a lot of us, we don't realize that mercy takes patience. Sometimes we can speak loosely at times and say, I have patience, but you don't have mercy. Mercy and patience, they go hand in hand. Without patience, there's no mercy. How can you have mercy without patience? Verse 8. Listen what he says, be you also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the master draws near. Grudge not one against another. Do you hear that? You hear what he's saying? He says, grudge not one against another, brothers. Lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Don't think our Heavenly Father and our King is not watching us and seeing if we are going to exemplify the same things that they gave to us. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? Freely you've received, freely give. Don't forget the times when you were in your darkness and how our Master was patient with you. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, my father, my king. Verse 10. He says, take my brothers, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the master for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of, it says, Job, Ayahub, and have seen the end of the master, that the master is very pitiful and of tender mercy. See, he's filled of it. Our Heavenly Father and our King, they have mercy abundantly. Does that mean that we're to abuse their mercy? No, we can't do that. We won't receive it. But what it's showing is the characteristics of them. And if their spirit is inside of us, then we should emulate the same characteristics. Verse 12, he says, But above all things, my brothers, swear not, neither by heaven, not, neither by the earth, Neither by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into condemnation. You see how the master's teachings are being 
Reflecting? So the apostles received what Akeem was saying. Verse 13, he says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the, it says the church, speaking of the assembly of the believers. And let them pray over him, appointing him with, excuse me, anointing him with oil in the name of the master. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the master shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Look at what that the fruit of mercy will do. But today, you know, it's sad. It's people out here who are sick. And people today are saying, well, you know what? Uh, just take your medication. It'll be all right. No prayer for the people, nothing. It seems like a lot of the leaders out here being just as carnal as can be. Verse 16. It says, confess your faults one to another. Thank you, my father, my king. You see this? He's speaking to the assembly now. That's who he was speaking to all the while. But he's speaking to those who are believers. But how many of us today, we think we're too good that we don't have no faults. We don't have to express nothing. We don't have to confess nothing. We just, everybody in their own little box thinking that they all right. How can the assembly grow when the things that we're going through is not being talked about or expressed? Verse 16, he says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you or me or any one of us who are believers and peers in the Messiah, if we're going through things and it's not being talked about, or address how can we grow as a people? How can we be healed as a people? Those two blind men who were following our king, Yahushua, if they didn't say anything, if there was no substance with their faith, would they be healed to where their eyes would be open? Thank you, my father, my king. Verse 17, it says, Elias.